What's up guys, my name's Stu, and tonight we are finally looking at my original series inspired cannon build. Yep, we're finally doing the original series build. I wanted to get this one out a lot sooner, but I got really distracted by the Terran bundle. I actually almost did a different build for this video, but then I remembered I still haven't done this one, so I really wanted to get it done before I forget about it. So let's get on with this one before I get sidetracked again. Like most of my cannon inspired builds, this is really just going to be a modified beam overload build. The biggest issue with these is usually just adapting to era appropriate gear. Fortunately for this original series style build, that's actually pretty easy thanks to the K-13 fleet holding. All of the era appropriate weapons that you need for this build can be attained from there. Whereas with most of these cannon inspired builds that don't use non-standard weapons, those usually come from lockboxes. Something to keep in mind about K-13, it doesn't just have TOS era phasers. It also has disruptors and plasma weapons from that era as well. So with this fleet holding, you can set up a TOS era Klingon or Romulan build too. The ship I'll be using for this video is one of my favorites in the game, the Temporal Light Cruiser. I'm sure a number of you would have liked me to use a different ship, but I chose this one for three reasons. One, I already have this one upgraded to tier 6X. I'm running low on experimental tokens and I really didn't want to spend one for this video. Two, it's a temporal ship. Most original series style ships are temporal ships, so adapting this build to one of those won't be difficult. And three, nothing says original series quite like an original constitution class. And like I said, this is one of my favorite ships in the game. I guess that's technically four, but whatever. In the weapon slots, first I am using a bunch of TOS style weapons, all of which came from the K-13 fleet holding. Specifically, I am using the Advanced Fleet Twin Phaser Beams in the front, and the Advanced Fleet Single Beams in the back. Now despite having different names, these are actually both just beam arrays. As you can see in the tooltip, their stats are actually identical. The difference between them is purely cosmetic. As their name suggests, the Twin Beam Phaser Banks will look like a pair of beams, much like you often see in the original series, while the Single Beams will be just that. I stuck the Single Beams in the back because technically that is canon. In the episode In a Mirror Darkly from Season 4 of Star Trek Enterprise, the Constitution class USS Defiant does fire single beam arrays from the aft phasers. But like I said, the difference between the two is purely cosmetic. If you wanted to go all twin beams or all single beams, you could easily do that. It makes no difference whatsoever stats-wise. There are also dual beam banks of these weapons too, so if you wanted to go in that direction, that is also an option for you. However, I decided to go all beam arrays because there is no TOS era Omni Beam. So despite this ship having a 5-3 layout, I'm going to be running this as a broadsider. Also in the weapon slots is an original series style Photon Torpedo. Stats wise, these are virtually identical to standard Photon Torpedoes. The only difference is that this one will have original series style animations and sound effects. This one I'm pretty sure came from an episode reward. I know two or three of the Agents of Yesteryear episodes reward these, but if you're on a non-TOS era character, your best option is K-13. Another way to get TOS era weapons is via the Tier 1 Constitution. If you have this ship unlocked in the Sea Store, it'll be equipped with TOS era phasers. It'll only have two because it's a tier one ship, but what you can do is claim the ship, take the weapons off of it, then dismiss the ship, and then claim it again, and repeat until you have enough. This method is really only good if you have the tier one constitution unlocked in the Sea Store, because then you get the free reclaim. Without it, you'll have to rebuy the ship each time with dilithium. Plus, they'll only be at rare quality, and you'll only get the twin beam style phaser beam arrays. Personally, I would just go to K13 directly. You'll have more options, and they'll already be at ultra rare quality. The rest of this is pretty standard for most of my beam overload builds. So the Colony Deflector, the Competitive Reputation Engine, the Spire Warp Core, and the Discovery Reputation Shield. My usual devices, the Energy Amplifier, the Deuterium Surplus, Reactive Armor Catalyst, the Red Matter Capacitor, and the Kobayashi Maru Transponder. Lorca's Custom Fire Control, the DPRM, the Domino, Temporal Trajectory Shifter, this one kind of fits the Temporal theme. The M6 Computer, which really fits the TOS theme the assimilated module, and my usual low-buy consoles, tachyokinetic converter and bioneural infusion circuits, and of course a bunch of vulnerability locators. My specializations are Intel Temporal, as usual. The personal traits are also pretty much the same as some of my previous videos. The difference here is that I'll have one less because I am running on a human character rather than my normal alien tunes. Because this is a TOS tune, and for some reason TOS characters aren't allowed to have aliens as an option. Which I think is stupid, but what can I do about it? Even if they did add aliens to the TOS fed faction, it's not like I could change this tune to one. Anyway, the personal traits. Quick overview of those. Fleet Coordinator. Context is for Kings. Adaptive Offense. Fragment of AI Tech. Intel Agent Attaché. Innocuous. Superior Beam Training. Terran Targeting Systems. Unconventional Systems. And the Boimler Effect. For the Starship traits, most of these I've used a lot. Emergency Weapon Cycle and Overpowered and Overgunned for reducing my weapons power cost and increasing my firing cycle haste. Super Weapon Ingenuity to extend the duration of beam overload so I can keep it up 100% of the time. 
preferential targeting to buff beam overload every time I use cannon scatter volley. This next one I don't use quite as often, but one of the two because this one is a temporal ship, part of soul off the temporal warships. Anytime I use attack pattern beta or a temporal bridge officer ability, I gain a buff to firing cycle haste and phaser damage. The phaser damage buff isn't a big deal. It's bonus damage, but 5% really isn't a lot. I'm mostly using this for the firing cycle haste. Haste buffs are a big deal for a beam overload build. Haste is also why I'm using this next trait, deadly appearances off of the legendary Burrell Bird of Prey. Now, the tooltip says it only triggers off of decloaking. However, for some reason, this is also being triggered by attack pattern Omega. Now, because that's not in the tooltip, I'm not entirely sure if that's working as intended. I know this has been reported to Cryptic, and they haven't done anything about it. So for now, I can only assume that this is either working as intended, or they just don't see it as a big deal. However, you never know, that's why I don't actually use this trait that often. So if you want to use deadly appearances like this, just be mindful that the attack pattern Omega trigger might not stick around forever. Either way, there are plenty of other good starship traits for energy weapon builds, so you're also free to choose from them as well. For the bridge officers, first I'm using this universal seat as a tactical seat. First is chemocyte lace weaponry to add a bit of radiation damage to my weapons, attack pattern beta for the debuff and to trigger heart of soul, and attack pattern omega for its bonus damage buff and to trigger deadly appearances. In the actual tactical seat, I have torpedo spread to buff my torpedo, scatter volley to trigger preferential targeting which will buff my beam overload, and beam overload 3 to buff my beams. You may have noticed that this version of Beam Overload is a 23rd century version. K13 has several 23rd century versions of certain bridge officer abilities. Like with the weapons, the difference between these and the original abilities is purely cosmetic. All it does is change the animation or sound effect of certain abilities. Sometimes it's not even that noticeable. They're also kind of pricey, especially on the higher levels. So whether you want those or not is up to you. The difference is purely cosmetic. In the engineering slash temporal seat, First is Heisenberg Amplifier and Chronometric Inversion Field, both of which are here to trigger unconventional systems, which helps lower the cooldown of my universal consoles, Emergency Power to Weapons to buff my energy weapons, and to trigger Emergency Weapon Cycle, and Recursive Sharing 3, which is a very powerful temporal ability. What it does is basically you designate a target, and for the next 5 seconds all the damage done to that target is stored. After 5 seconds, 30% of that damage will be dealt as physical damage. Now this counts all damage done to that target, whether it comes from you or somewhere else. So depending on how much damage you or your team is doing, this could be a very powerful ability. And lastly, in the science seat, jam targeting sensors, scramble sensors, and tractor beam, all of which are here to trigger unconventional systems. And in the duty officers, a trio of projectile officers to help with my crit chance and or severity, an energy weapon officer that gives me some extra shield penetration every time I use beam overload, an energy weapon officer to buff my crit chance, Though really this one's here just because I couldn't think of anything else to put there. These really aren't great for beam overload builds because of the reduced firing rate. And 41 of 47 to help with the cooldowns of my tactical and temporal abilities. Now, like I said earlier, most TOS era ships are also temporal ships. So adapting this build to most of those shouldn't be that difficult. And even if you're not using a temporal ship, again, it's really just a matter of adapting to the specialization seating. That's one of the nice things about these cannon builds is that they're really just modified versions of basic builds. In this case, beam overload. Though really, I could have easily gone with Fire at Will as well. All it would require doing is swapping out Super Weapon Ingenuity for Entwined Tactical Matrices. And in that case, I wouldn't need preferential targeting either, so I'd have one more free slot. As always, it's your theme build. Do what you like with it. Now, let's go check out the ISC and then the parse.
295k. That's pretty good for a broadside build, and a theme one at that. Of course, a good amount of that DPS is coming from recursive shearing. Like I said, that has the potential to be a very powerful ability. This is one of the reasons why I like temporal ships so much. So yeah, that is my original series cannon build. I hope you enjoyed seeing it in action. While using all original series gear is a bit limiting, it is rather easy to obtain thanks to the K-13 fleet holding. So hopefully you guys shouldn't have too much trouble adapting this to your own builds. Anyway, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I know, every time, but it does help the channel and I do appreciate it. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.